With India's Chandrayaan-3 ready for a soft landing, the key focus now is on the final landing phase scheduled for Wednesday, August 23, evening around 6 p.m. With the final 15 minutes holding the key to a successful mission. These can be called the 15 minutes of terror also. The other critical part of the Chandrayaan-3 landing is the simultaneous process of bringing the Chandrayaan-3 lander's horizontal velocity down from the range of 1.68 km, sec or 1,680 m, sec at a height of 30 km from the surface of the moon to almost 0 m, sec to facilitate a soft landing at the pre-designated site near the moon's south pole. The Chandrayaan-3 is tilted almost 90 degrees at this time when the landing process begins at 5.47 p.m. on August 23, but it needs to be vertical, for a landing. This whole process of turning the lander from a horizontal to a vertical position is a very interesting calculation mathematically. We have done a lot of simulations. This is where we had a problem the last time, ISRO chairman said. The transfer from the horizontal position to the vertical position to achieve the landing is the trick that we have to play over here. We have to ensure that the fuel consumed is less, the distance calculation is correct and all the algorithms are working properly," he added. The Chandrayaan-2 landing in September 2019 was seemingly on track up to around three minutes before the final, terminal descent phase, when the lander ended up spinning over 410 degrees and deviated from a calibrated spin of 55 degrees to crash on the moon. The speed and direction of the Chandrayaan-3's lander is controlled by 12 onboard engines. The lander's four engines are used to reduce the velocity and there are also eight small engines to control the direction of the descent. The engines are throttleable and the thrust can be varied from 800 Newton to almost a lower value. It can keep the lander hovering on moon gravity. The horizontal velocity at the start of the landing process which will be around almost 1.68 km, sec or almost 1,680 m, sec, vertical velocity is zero at this stage has to be first reduced to 358 meters, sec horizontal velocity and a 61 meters, sec vertical velocity in an ideal, rough braking phase, of 690 seconds when the lander descends from an altitude of 30 kilometers, at a distance of 745.5 kilometers from the landing site, to 7.42 kilometers, while traversing a total distance of 713.5 kilometers across the surface of the moon towards the landing site. When the lander reaches a height of 7.42 km from the moon's surface it will go into an attitude hold phase, lasting around 10 seconds where the lander will make a first tilt from a horizontal towards a vertical position while covering a distance of 3.48 km where altitude is reduced from 7.42 km to 6.8 km and velocity to 336 m, sec, horizontal, and 59 m, sec, vertical. In the third of the landing phases over the lunar surface known as the fine braking phase, lasting around 175 seconds, the lander will move completely into a vertical position during the final 28.52 km distance to the landing site with the altitude being reduced from 6.8 km to 801 thousandths of a meter in a nominal speed of 0 m, sec. From 30 km to 7.42 km, altitude, will be rough braking and at 7.42 km there will be an attitude hold phase where some of the instruments will carry out calculations. At 800 or 1,300 meters, altitude, it will start doing a verification of the sensors. At 150 meters, altitude, it will do a hazard verification and decide whether it should land vertically there itself or move laterally to a maximum extent of 150 meters to avoid any boulders or craters. The new systems will facilitate thrust and angle continuity for the lander as it maneuvers from a horizontal to a vertical position. Extensive simulations have been done, the guidance designs have been changed, a lot of the algorithms have been put together to ensure that the required dispersions are obtained in all these phases. Even if there are variations in the nominal numbers still the lander will make an attempt at a vertical landing. If all sensors fail, if everything fails it will still make a landing provided the propulsion system works well. This is how it has been designed. Even if two of the engines do not work also this time the lander will be able to land. It has been designed in such a way that it should be able to handle multiple failures. If the algorithms work well we should be able to do a vertical landing. The lander can touch down at a maximum speed of 3 meters, sec, 10.8 kilometers per hour, without endangering the instruments on board but the optimal speed is around 2 meters, sec, 7.2 kilometers per hour. The lander can also have a tilt of up to 12 degrees for a safe landing. Although 3 meters, sec looks like a low speed, if a human falls at that speed all our bones will be crushed. While this is not a small speed it is a speed we can guarantee with our sensors and measurements. Attempting to land at an ultra-low speed also requires a lot of fuel and theoretically there has to be some velocity to touch down and this has been identified as 1 meter, sec. The system is however built to handle the velocity of up to 3 meters, sec. 
The design of Chandrayaan-2 was for a landing at a speed of 2 meters, sec, 7.2 kilometers per hour, with a small margin of increase but we have now increased the speed threshold for landing. We have created energy-absorbing capability, the ISRO chairman said recently. Our aim is to have a soft and safe landing. No instruments will work if there is a crash. There are five experiments on the mission three are on the lander and two on the rover. These experiments will work only with a safe and soft landing. Once the lander settles on the surface of the moon it will release a rover that it is carrying on board to take pictures of the surface of the moon and conduct experiments with two onboard instruments.